Kevin Brown, CTO for the IT division at Schneider Electric. Kevin, Schneider's just announced Hyperpod. Can you tell us a little bit about what that solution addresses, please? Well, it's interesting, Damien, because we started looking at uh, different data centers a number of years ago. And, you know, within the industry, it's pretty well known that, you know, something simple like containment strategies have a very big impact on efficiency. But yet I was walking around data centers and seeing various ones very well built, built by very knowledgeable people, and they weren't deploying the strategy. So we started looking at that and trying to understand why that something that is so compelling from an efficiency standpoint actually wasn't being deployed as, as broadly as we thought. And the result of this was, uh, uh, was, was the impetus behind what's become Hyperpod. So what exactly does Hyperpod consist of? Well, Hyperpod was really a way, so one, we wanted to solve a few problems or challenges that we saw out there. So one, we wanted to make sure that we were enabling people to deploy containment, right? In traditional white space environments. You know, we've talked a lot about prefab and micro data centers, but in a traditional environment, we wanted to provide a solution that enabled people to do that. And what we saw was current solutions that are out there in the market today, you know, involved a lot of construction, involved hanging things on the racks, and uh, so they just weren't flexible enough and, or cost effective enough for customers really to be able to deploy. And so that was uh, one aspect of what we were looking at, so. What does the solution consist of though? So the solution itself uh, has evolved into where, now you, if you start thinking of your data center as pods inside of the white space, what Hyperpod is is a fully engineered system where you can put in a frame, and this frame can carry, it's, you know, can be hot aisle or cold aisle uh, compatible, compatible with different power distribution methodologies, compatible with different cooling, chilled water, air economizer, compatible with all those. We engineered it to be compatible with as much as possible. So not only does it give you containment, which was the impetus behind it, but we also were trying to minimize the amount that people needed to hang from ceilings. So I can run my cables, data, power, I can run the cooling piping, all on the frame. And what that allows me to do is to really, allows our customers to do, is really to minimize the amount of construction that's happening inside the, inside the white space itself. So we found in particular for co-location providers, there was a lot of value in them being able to deploy the infrastructure without having to do a construction project and without, uh, uh, and something that their customers would accept, accept if there was already IT in the room. So uh, we think it's a very unique approach and there's uh, some real benefits that uh, we're seeing out of it. So you're saying it's, it's appropriate for companies that already have live environments as well as say companies that are just providing power cooling and space as a service? Yeah, I think so, because for those who are just doing power cooling and space, it allows them to provide the infrastructure into the white space more effectively. Um, and for you know, established environments, there's uh, uh, the benefit of being able to retrofit and modernize your data center. And we think, we developed some models. Our model is showing that this is about a 15% lower cost than current uh, methods of building and uh, about 20% faster to deploy. And our pilot uh, customers who have deployed this, you know, they seem to be coming back with numbers uh, similar to that. So we're quite excited about it. We think we're uh, onto something that can really help the industry and help in these uh, traditional uh, uh, data center environments. And uh, so we're pretty enthusiastic. In your keynote at Data Center Dynamics, you talked about the three types of data centers. Is, is this specific to a certain sort of data center? Well, yeah, in our model, we think of the world, uh, our greatly simplified view of the world maybe, but is that there's three types of data centers of the big centralized cloud data centers, the regional data centers, and then the local edge. And we were targeting Hyperpod towards that regional data center right, that, uh, you know, very much like what a co-location provider might have or what enterprise might still have as uh, their own data center, but certainly it also applies uh, in any of the centralized cloud data centers and, and, and uh, we look forward to working with them as well.